Growing pains are real. Once you start scaling your brand beyond seven and eight figures, you're gonna start to notice some cracks in your business's foundation and stuff's gonna start leaking through. Now, at that point, you might start to think it's time you become a big boy company and maybe you implement an ERP. I mean, that is what pretty much all big companies eventually do. It's basically inevitable. And if it goes well, you'll give your business the stability to scale to new heights. But if it goes wrong, you could bring the whole thing tumbling down. So in this video, we'll go over what an ERP actually is, what signs to look for that you might actually need one, and what problems to avoid to make sure that the ERP actually helps your business instead of hurting it. To start, ERP stands for Enterprise Resource Planning System. An ERP is basically the brain behind your company. It's the single source of truth that holds all of your company's data and where all of the various processes are managed. Now, the exact implementation and usage of an ERP can vary a lot from company to company. But the simplest way to think of it is that it's basically an accounting software on steroids and it controls your inventory, your shipping, your customer data, your customer orders, your vendors, your bills, company personnel, customer service, everything. A lot of businesses look to implement an ERP as they grow and start to need more sophistication. Many growing businesses start to struggle as their size increases because of how much volume of data there is and how many more moving parts there are. So an ERP helps manage all that. However, implementing an ERP is not easy at all. They're quite expensive and very difficult to implement and then use. Almost anyone who's been through an ERP implementation has horror stories about how it was a complete disaster cost way more than expected and caused way more issues after it was there. Yet companies keep on implementing them because they're just so valuable. So knowing the right time to make the move is crucial. So then that leads us to how do you know that it might be time for you to consider taking such a dangerous leap? I'll run through a bunch of different signs to consider and mind you almost none of these in isolation is a good enough reason to get an ERP but it's more about several of them being there enough. So the first one to think about is multi-channel sales. If your inventory lives in multiple locations and you're selling through multiple channels and a more sophisticated inventory tracking system can help deal with the errors that can arise from more complex inventory ins and outs. For example, at a small size, you might have a single manufacturer that sends inventory to a single warehouse and you just sell on Shopify and they ship out the orders for you. That's it. But as you scale, you might need to keep inventory in multiple warehouses, maybe one in Canada, one in the US. Maybe you have to keep inventory at Amazon. Your manufacturer might send singles to one warehouse for DTC orders, but bulk packs to another warehouse for wholesale orders. On top of that, you might have to move inventory around. So from your wholesale warehouse to DTC, DTC and then from DTC to Amazon or from one country to the next. An ERP can track all of that much better than a spreadsheet. It can tell you how much inventory you have in each location, how much inventory you have in all locations and how much is in transit. The second sign is if you do internal fulfillment. If you have your own warehouse instead of a 3PL to be able to fulfill all your DTC orders, then it's better to have a system that's a sophisticated enough to handle all the pick, pack and ship activities. Without a good system to connect all those activities together, there are so many errors that can arise. Maybe a customer reaches out to cancel their order, but you've already done the pick activities, you want to cancel the ship activity. Maybe a customer reaches out complaining that they got the right item and you look at the shipping label and it says it's the right item, but that was printed at the same time as your order came through and there's no tracking of what item was scanned off the shelf by your employee. Or an employee might accidentally mark an order as shipped, but an ERP would have prevented that because there was no pick activity and no scanning of the item in the warehouse to allow for a shipping to happen. A system that tracks all the steps reduces the risk of error and also makes it easier to troubleshoot when things go wrong. The third thing to consider is wholesale. If you start to get more sophisticated with your wholesale activities, there's a lot of stuff to track like sales orders, purchase orders, shipping documents, invoices, and payments. The entire sales process has many steps. And if they're not all linked together by a coherent system, then there's a lot of room for error. For example, a customer places an order for a hundred each of three different items. The warehouse only has two of them in stock. So they ship those two, but the invoice process is not connected. So they see the PO asking for three items. So it bills the customer for three instead of looking at the shipment for only two. And you can have similar errors arise when you're receiving inventory from your manufacturer. You might receive less than what you ordered, or you might get invoiced for something different than what you received. So an ERP helps connect all of those steps in the process, which reduces errors significantly. The fourth consideration are inventory mismatches. Many brands often find discrepancies between the amount of inventory they think they have and the inventory that they actually have physically. So an ERP can help a lot with that by providing really good tracking from the moment you purchase something to when it's received, to when it's stored, to when it's sold. There are tons of different reasons that these sorts of inventory discrepancies can arise over time. You can have the wrong item being shipped, items being broken or being stolen, or people returning items, but you not adding them back to inventory properly. For most brands, they only realize this discrepancy exists when they go to sell something and then it's not actually in the warehouse. So having an ERP, which connects all the various inventory steps together, as well as facilitating things like cycle counting can help reduce these errors a lot. The fifth is inventory costing. If you have to keep track of raw materials like packaging or capitalized costs like shipping and customs to large orders with multiple SKUs, things can get really messy. 
efficiency. And if you do your own manufacturing and have to keep track of all the different raw materials, the labor, the machines being used, the work in progress, that can get extremely messy. ERPs are built to be able to handle all those different complexities. It also makes it easier to use different costing methods like average costing where the cost of your inventory is constantly being recalculated. Next we've got catalog complexity. If you have a massive list of SKUs or you have expiry dates to worry about or seasonality or lot coding for food, then an ERP can help keep track of different batches. A lot of these issues are manageable if you have just a single SKU to keep track of. But if the number of SKUs goes up or the amount of volume goes up, then the room for error increases quite a bit. Especially if you have food items that need to keep track of lot codes for safety, it becomes a lot easier to know exactly which lot a product was shipped from to which customer. But even with something like apparel, it can get messy when you have to keep track of how many you have of a particular color, of a particular size, of a particular SKU, and what season it's from. Next up, we've got inventory activities. If you do a lot of interlocation transferring or things like kitting and bundling, then an ERP can help make sure things don't get lost in the shuffle. Kitting and bundling in particular adds a lot of complexity because it makes it difficult to reconcile between what you actually have and what your system thinks it can sell. For example, you might have 10 singles of a particular item and 50 10 packs. Some systems will consider those two separate items, but an ERP can also consider that the 50 10 packs is actually 500 singles, which gives you 600 total singles if you need it. Or if you sell a variety pack that has one unit of six different SKUs, your system needs to be able to know how many singles you have and how many bulk packs you have of each SKU to let you know how many bundles you can make. Next is if you have subsidiaries or just a complex corporate structure. If you have multiple legal entities that you need to consolidate or there are financial activities between them like selling inventory back and forth, then an ERP can help a lot. By default, most accounting systems will treat each legal entity as a completely separate company. However, with an ERP, you can look at your consolidated inventory to know how much of a particular SKU you have within Canada and in the US. And if you start selling between different legal entities or different countries, you can also keep track of how much of that is real profit to external customers versus just internal transfer pricing issues. The next thing to consider is reporting. If you have a large number of complex reports that you need regularly, an ERP can help automate this because it has all the information. Like maybe you have a report that you want to be able to see weekly that's very time consuming to put together manually. Like knowing the top five SKUs that were sold in each state, an ERP can automate that easily. Or there might be a report that you don't want regularly, but you want it as an alert when it's relevant. Like knowing if the sale of any SKU drops more than 50% week over week. Normally, a person might have to manually check that every single week and only let you know if there's something that went wrong. However, an ERP can just constantly check and alert you if there's something relevant to alert you with. And the last thing to consider is just volume. Even if you don't have any of the specific complexities we've mentioned thus far, if your business is growing and you just have a very large volume of transactions, ERPs are just better at handling it. So to decide when you might need to consider implementing an ERP, you really have to take into consideration all of these, both the complexity and the volume. So now let's say you heard all that and you're thinking to yourself, wow, that sounds like me. So you're picking up the phone to call the ERP guy to rush over and implement one. Hold up. An ERP implementation isn't something to be taken lightly. It's a very expensive and difficult endeavor. So here are a few things to consider to know if you're even ready to handle one. Firstly, there's your team sophistication. Do you have a team that can handle the implementation and maintenance of an ERP? If your whole system was very analog and there was a lot of paper and writing stuff down, then chances are the people working on your team aren't very techy either. That might mean needing to upgrade your team if the old team can't adapt to the new way of doing things. Your team needs to be tech savvy, open to learning and changing things, and they should be good problem solved. A lot can go wrong during an implementation. So if your team isn't good on thinking on their feet and they only know how to follow very strict processes, then they're gonna have a tough time. On the other hand, let's say you get through the implementation, but your team's not very good at following the new processes or adapting to it, then you're gonna have a lot of missing data in the system, which makes the whole thing kind of useless. An ERP doesn't do the work on its own. People have to use it, but correctly. The second thing is data competence. Are you actually ready to use all that new data effectively? An ERP system is gonna provide you a ton of new information. And if you can effectively analyze and use that data, it's gonna drastically impact your decision-making process and your business strategy. But if you're not gonna actually use the data or don't know how, then it's not really worth paying for and the abundance of it might actually just make it more confusing and overwhelming. The third thing is implementation capacity. Your team is likely already very busy and an ERP implementation is a massive undertaking. Not only that, but it's usually best practice to run both systems in parallel for a while to make sure that there are no errors. So that means you need enough capacity to keep doing what you're already doing, enough to implement the new system, enough to train everybody, and also to run them both in parallel for a little while. You need to make sure that you have the bandwidth, and oftentimes that means that you have to have more capacity available to begin with so that the people can keep doing the maintenance work as well as have a portion of your team focus on the implementation. That often also means that you're gonna have to bring in some consultants, not only to bring in additional capacity, but to bring in expertise that your team currently doesn't have. The fourth thing is guidance, because finding the right partner to help you implement an ERP isn't always that straightforward. I've seen this issue myself when I've 
stepped in to help a company complete an implementation that had stalled. The problem is that the ERP vendor often knows the software very well, but they don't know the company nor the accounting well enough to know how it should be implemented. And the company obviously knows their current processes, but they don't know what the ERP is capable of, so they also don't know how to change their processes to adapt to those capabilities. So either the consultant is going to recommend ERP best practices that don't actually work that well for the company, or the company is going to request that the ERP is customized to do what exactly what they're doing right now, even if that's not really using the ERP well. So in those situations, I was able to help because I understand the ERP well enough, and I also understand the company and the accounting well enough to be able to bridge that gap. The fifth thing is that there are just a lot of different options for ERPs, and a lot of companies have different nuances that make it difficult to pick the right one. There are many different ERPs and tons of fancy vendors, and every single one of them is going to say that their software can work for your needs. But you need to do the research to know which one is the best for your size, your industry, your needs, your growth plans, and which one's going to work well with all the other software you're currently using that it needs to integrate with. And the sixth thing is the significant cash investment. An ERP is usually a very significant cash investment to implement and to keep running. An ERP implementation can easily reach six figures for smaller businesses even because it takes months of consultants time to work on and also there's the time that your team has to dedicate to it. And even after implementation the softwares themselves can be quite expensive and cost over five figures a month. Ultimately if you're going to be making these very substantial investments you have to make sure that there's an actual return on investment for it. In theory if you're solving for all of the problems we mentioned before then it's very worth it but oftentimes the implementation either goes wrong or the company just doesn't take advantage of the ERP, so they still have those issues. But if you are able to tackle all these issues, then implementing an ERP can be a transformative step for a growing business. When done at the right time, you can significantly improve operations, reduce errors, and make better informed decisions to grow. An ERP is not just an investment in software, it's an investment in the future of your business. So take the time to assess your needs, prepare your team, and choose the right implementation partner and ERP for what you're trying to achieve. If you need any help with an implementation or just deciding whether it makes sense for you to implement one, feel free to reach out. We've worked on plenty of implementations, so we can give you an honest answer of whether or not it's worth the effort. And if you're still not ready for an ERP, you might enjoy this video on five essential inventory management tips in the meantime. But other than that, I hope this video was helpful. Reach out if you have any questions, and I'll see you next time.